So today's video is going to be a little bit different because I'm going to ask you some questions. Not that I can hear your answers, but what matters is that you can. Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to my channel, The Professional PhD. I am Dr. Viola Lanier and I have quite a few years being a field application scientist. All right, I want you to be honest with yourself. I want you to ask yourself, is the field application scientist role for me? Not me, you. Is it really for you? In order to answer that, it's important that you ask yourself a couple of more questions. So I'm gonna ask you at least three questions today and I want you to answer for yourself and then rank that answer. If you say yes, then how much of that is a yes? Is it 80% yes, 90, 100? Was it a 50% no or a 90% no? And if you realize that most of your answers are like a 50-50 yes, no, then it may be time to pretty much open that door of career opportunities to see what's next in line for you. So on that note, let's jump in. Question number one. Are you okay with traveling a lot? Now, I will tell you, in some field application scientist roles, you may only travel 50% of the time. But there's quite a few field application scientist roles where you are traveling the majority of the week. So maybe you're out there in the field at least three to four days a week. Heaven forbid, five but you're out there a lot. And so are you okay with traveling? Are you okay with coming home on a Friday, horrible time in the airport, and then leaving out on a Monday or leaving out that Tuesday? Are you okay with leaving your family behind during the week? Are you okay with missing your children if you have children? Are you okay with just pretty much having an office on the road, it seems like. Are you okay with kind of feeling like you're living out of a suitcase the majority of the month? These are the things that you need to really think about. I know traveling always sounds exciting and it's always fun. And for some of us who are PhDs, we can't wait to get out the lab and, and get on the road and just explore this big wide world pretty much. However, after a while, and you probably heard this saying, it can get old. So this is a question you really need to ask yourself at the very beginning of the field application scientist role. And if you realize that when you rank this, um, I'm 50% okay with traveling because I will miss my kids or I will miss my husband or my wife a lot, or I don't want to live out of a suitcase, then you may want to take that answer pretty seriously because the traveling in a field role like this can be a lot. It doesn't mean that you don't go for the role or you don't stay in the role, but it helps you to really confidently feel more sure about going after the field application scientist role. And you're usually always asked this question in the interview. Are you okay with traveling? And your hesitancy will show. Your 50% confidence in it probably will show. The second question I want you to ask yourself is, are you okay? with being seen as the true subject matter expert when it comes to the content and when it comes to anything technical. You may not even know the answer fully to this question if you haven't been a field application scientist, but you may feel like you do know it because usually, especially as PhDs, you know, we, we are pretty much experts in uh, our content of choice, our research area of choice. And it feels good, right? When you are, you're presenting on that, you're known in your academic institution for that, you um, can defend it well. But when you're in a company, when you're in industry and you have many departments that you're dealing with, and you have marketing asking you for your level of expertise for in relation to a certain question. Uh, you have research and development, you have sales, you have the customers. 
sometimes it can be overwhelming because usually as research scientists, you're not used to questions coming in that quick from so many different people and with so many different perspectives. I really think is a good question to evaluate. It's, it wouldn't necessarily be a deal breaker. However, when you get in the role, if you realize that as time goes on, that you like or don't like being seen as the expert as much, maybe it went from 80 to 90% when you first started to now it is 40 or 30%, then you may wanna consider looking for other opportunities that are similar to the field application scientist role, but doesn't have you necessarily pinpoint as the subject matter expert of the company for that content or that technicality. The third question you should ask yourself is, are you okay with working with so many different departments? Are you okay with being a liaison? Are you really okay with that? Because let me tell you, FYI, sometimes one department, it's awesome to work with. R&D, you're constantly working with them. And then sometimes the marketing department or the sales department can be very challenging to work with. And I'm not talking about just the people, but I'm talking about the way they think. Or flip it. Maybe the R&D can be excruciating to work with. Simply because the way they think, you think is similar to scientists, but a lot of times it's very different. And so the level of questioning or the level of expectation they have on you can be overwhelming. So I just want you to think overall, are you going to be okay with working with different types of specialists that are internally on your team? Are you going to also be okay with working with different types of specialists or experts in the field? So you show up to a place and you think that everybody's going to be a super duper scientist. Not all the time. Sometimes you're dealing with someone who's very entry level into science. And they're just going to be the hands-on deck person that the scientists use at that site to get work done. And so you may start to feel like, wow, a lot of my trainings are now not scientists or not physicians. And now you may feel a little bit less valued or your role is less valued. And that's something you just need to think about when it comes to the field application scientist role. Especially because that can really change depending on the company you work for. All right, guys. Well, I want to thank you for tuning into this video. And I hope these questions will help you to feel a little bit more confident or help you to see if you need to go back to your own drawing table and decide if you want to continue on with applying for this field or being in this field. So if you think this video is or could be helpful for you, please make sure you give it a thumbs up. That was me waiting for you to give it a thumbs up. Thank you. Well, I'll leave you to think about the answers to those questions. I thank you guys for tuning in to this video and I hope to connect with you again soon. Have a good one. Bye.